hello 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 so this is first of many amazing videos of me pondering in the park pondering pondering with my dog wendy say hello wendy hmm she's not that interested she wants the ball i think go get the ball wendy don't chew the lead get the ball so the new magic leap 2 um looks nice the headset bit anyway we haven't seen the um the bit that it's connected to which sits in your pocket which on the magic leap one they call the light pack and it's like a it looks like one of those old 90s um sony cd walkmans um, it's about that size anyway possibly even a little bit thicker and uh slots in your pocket and has the the uh, cpu gpu processor on it and i guess that because it's magic leaps a few years old so i guess that whole unit could come down quite dramatically in size now unless they're pushing a really good gpu in the new hardware uh, which requires a bit more size but uh yeah the new headset the uh the eyewear part of it looks really nice yeah it's slimmer it still has that sort of all-in-one crown um affair going on so it wraps around the head it's got a kind of uh, band on the back um but i quite like the magic leap one's uh system of expansion with that sort of bit at the back it's quite nice i guess they've managed to uh, make that a little bit more slim line um yeah the rest of it looks nice and uh the form factor's slim and pretty good but like all these things the hardware is very important but at the end of the day it'll be the software and the tools and the ecosystem um that will make the magic leap too successful or not uh, I've only just started playing around with all that side of things with the Magic Leap 1 and so far impressions are good they have good developer tools a good developer website the SDK is uh, you know straightforward has good documentation they have software for the MacBook which is great and it works on the new M1 as well you know for, for side loading apps and for installing them I'm using Unity as my development tool for building the apps. And so far, that's been relatively straightforward. Um, I've installed the Mixed Reality Toolkit from Microsoft, which is an open source uh, toolkit for doing UI, you know, Mixed Reality UI and uh, hand tracking and things like that. And there's a Magic Leap extension for that kit which looks pretty good and uh, it's got a few things missing like the keyboard support and I'm not convinced the hand tracking is is all there at the moment but um, but generally it opens up you know quite a few questions about the user experience for mixed reality devices and how we should be approaching that as, a, as conventions and I'll be doing a follow-up video to uh, talk about that side of things because I think it's quite important um, as I say, the hand tracking, you know, is clunky. But to be honest, I think that anyway, um, even with Oculus, um, I don't particularly like using my, just my hands for, for doing the selection on the Oculus, you know, for menus. And the way I think of it is like, um, do you remember when everybody first started using the, the MacBook laptop's trackpad instead of a mouse? And it's great for you know, you're sweeping gestures and um, quickly navigating around, but you soon find yourself wanting finer control, you know, if you're going on to Illustrator or using a tool that needs a little bit more fine uh, control and motor movement of your fingers, then you really want a mouse then. You want something a bit more controlled. And that, that's how I feel about hand tracking. It's great for quickly being able to 
grab and you know do the teleportation for for example or things like that but when you want to grab stuff and resize things and rotate them and do finer movements then the control is great it just it just works you pick it up and it's an extension of your hand and it's simplified and you know exactly what you're doing and i think that's going to be very important when it comes to uh, enterprise applications where you you're you're going to have some md of a company wanting to try it out and he's not very tech savvy and before long you know if you're not careful and you've tried to implement some shonky hand tracking app then you're going to get into trouble and he's going to turn around and say what the hell is this it doesn't work uh, and also of course you've got uh, people in the field engineers wearing big fat gloves and to be honest and even um you know control is going to be difficult in those situations you really want to start thinking about using voice control actually talking to the app so if you wanted to drag something forward you'd actually uh say the words you know move this forward move it left move it right etc um and that's something i'm also going to be exploring is using voice as a ui using the dialog flow apis which are generally used for building voice apps and using that those conversational models to then control uh, mixed reality applications or, or virtual reality. So yeah, it's interesting times at the moment, and uh, we'll see what happens when Apple release something. God knows when. Um, and they will show everybody a thing or two about tools, software, uh, and the user experience. Um, and I can imagine it will probably be very similar to the way the iPhone was released originally, which is um, some set apps and then uh, open up the app store to developers uh, a while later when they've tested the waters, so to speak. So yeah, interesting times. And look out for my video that I'll be posting on the Mixed Reality Toolkit from Microsoft and its integration with Magic Leap. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening to my pondering in the park. Bye-bye.